Great. Uh, hi, I'm Suzanne. I'm based here at Harriet Watt uh, University. And I'm going to uh, speak to you today about bringing gamification to the economics classroom. So I will structure my talk as follows. I'm going to start by uh, telling you why I decided to introduce escape rooms to my course. I'll then give a little bit of background to that particular course. I will talk about uh, the design briefly and then the evaluation that we've done uh, so far. And then I'll talk about my future plans for more formal evaluation and, and also for using the escape rooms again in the next academic year. OK, so my main motivation for introducing escape rooms uh, to this particular course was the poor tutorial um, attendance and engagement that we'd experienced in the course and more generally um, uh, across some of our courses. Um, so particularly since COVID, we'd had a real issue with getting students into the, the classroom for tutorials. And when they were there, they weren't keen to contribute, share ideas, share answers. So, um, yeah, so we had real trouble with that. So that was one of my uh, key motivations. Uh, the second one was I actually participated in my first educational um, escape room. Uh, it was one uh, devised by my colleague and the organiser of this event, Claire. And I thought this was a really, it really struck me straight away how um, great this kind of thing was and the potential it had. And, and I was keen to incorporate it into my own teaching. So a little bit of background to the, the course. Um, it's uh, the course um, that I introduced the escape room to is a really large first year economics, introductory economics course. Uh, it's taught at, across three campuses, Edinburgh, Dubai and Malaysia. And in Edinburgh, we have nearly 500 students uh, on the course. I'm going to focus on Edinburgh. We did deliver the escape rooms in Dubai, but um, we did it a little bit differently. There. So I'm going to focus on Edinburgh today. Um, so th this course is taken by a range of students with different backgrounds, um, all students who do um, uh, any business programme at Harriet Watt will do my first year economics course and it's also an optional course for students from other schools. Uh, most of the students taking the course had not done any economics before. We deliver weekly lectures, two hour lectures and weekly two hour tutorials beginning in, in week three. Uh, we had approximately 50 students per tutorial group, so 10 tutorial groups across the week. Um, I delivered the first of those tutorial groups on, on a Monday. Um, uh, at the Edinburgh campus, we had six different tutors, um, including myself, delivering tutorials. So these six tutors would also be delivering the escape rooms. And we also this year um, had student helpers. We had some fourth year student helpers, um, one in e each uh, tutorial group as well. So uh, the escape room design, I delivered two different escape rooms um, of the semester, uh, one in tutorial one and one in tutorial four. I'll start by focusing on the, the first escape room. So decided to deliver the first escape room in the very first tutorial of the uh, semester. Uh, the reason for that was that I wanted to get tutorials off to a really good start. I wanted students to um, see tutorials as a really positive thing, to find them engaging and interesting and uh, for them to want to come back and also to get um, off to a good start in terms of students working with each other and collaboration. So um, that was the motivation for introducing uh, the escape room right at the beginning. Um, after some deliberation and some input from the Learning and Teaching Academy, I decided to go for hard copies of the questions. The tutorials are face to face and I could have had students working on, on computers in the room, but I decided really mainly for simplicity and because of the tutors would be delivering this, that I would go for hard copies of the um, questions. Uh, I, I was pleasantly surprised that it was quite easy to adapt existing tutorial questions. So I didn't um, have to come up with everything from scratch, which, which was a real bonus. It was actually yeah, quite easy to, to, to use existing questions. I decided to start with some easier rounds of questions uh, just to try and set students in at the beginning. And I used a mix of mathematical questions and, and word based puzzles uh, to try and be inclusive and appeal to students with different backgrounds. 
and my theme was a realistic business scenario. Students were told that they were uh, managers of a, a global in a global hotel chain and they had to report to the board of uh, directors about a potential expansion of the company. Um, if they completed all seven rounds of questions, then they would escape from the boardroom. OK, so in terms of evaluation, I will talk about my own observations uh, to begin with. So I'll focus on this this first um, escape room that I delivered on the Monday of, of um, week three. So I was really happy actually to, to see it, to, to be in the room and to observe what was happening. Um, the things that struck me straight away was how everybody was involved. Everybody was taking part uh, in the activity. There was nobody um, that was on the periphery or looking a bit lost or distracted by other things. Everybody was really um, engaged and involved in the activity. The students all seemed to be enjoying themselves. It all ran uh, really smoothly. It was a huge asset to have a fourth year helper in the room. It really needed two of us just to manage things well. But the, the, the overall experience was really very positive. Um, so that was a great start. After that first escape room had been delivered, I decided to make a few minor adjustments. Um, it was difficult to predict the timing beforehand, how long I should give students to to complete the escape room. Uh, so I decided for the, the rest of the escape rooms, rest of the week, uh, the other nine groups, I would give them a little bit longer just so that more of them were completing the escape room. I also made a couple of the questions slightly easier and I um, changed some of the wording just for clarity. So I was able to make those adjustments uh, for the, the remainder of the, the, the tutorials and the escape rooms. Um, as the, the rest of the tutorials ran over the week, um, I started to get some really positive feedback in tutors. Um, I was saying they thought it had gone really well, it was easy to run and they could see how engaged students were. Students were telling me that they really liked this um, this format. It, um, they found it really, uh, really good way uh, to learn and, and uh, uh, to be involved. Um, in terms of resources, it, the, the actual escape room took a little bit of time to put together, as, as, as you would expect. Um, as long as you're aware of that, you, you allow the time, I think that's OK. Um, so to put together and to pilot it, et cetera, you need a bit of time for that. And then the resources, um, because I was delivering to so many students and it was paper based and I needed a lot of paper and, and the printing was quite a big task. I decided to do all the printing for the tutors just to make sure that everybody had exactly what they needed, the right number of sheets of questions, questions in the right order and everything. So that was for my own peace of mind. Communication was really key. Um, I knew that if I wanted the tutors to deliver this the way I wanted them to um, and, and sort of share my vision of this whole thing, I needed to com communicate really well with them. So I, I um, sent some written communication around about the different steps and what the role of the tutor was and the role of the student helper uh, and as much sort of detail as I could. Um, and then after that first, um, Sorry, I haven't managed to, to mute uh, my chat. Uh, after that first um, escape room that I delivered, I was able to then give, uh, speak to each of the tutors individually and give them some tips on the practicalities of um, running the escape room. So that was really helpful. When we went on to deliver the second escape room, okay, that was in week four, uh, sorry, in tutorial four, which was week seven, um, I decided for, uh, to use that timing because uh, students would have just been coming back after the consolidation week. Uh, so after sort of break in, in teaching and sometimes students can lose motivation then. So um, we thought that was a good time to, to do the second escape room to try and lift energy levels and enthusiasm and engagement again. Unfortunately, the second escape room didn't go quite as smoothly as the first one. And the reason for that was that it was um, the difficulty level wasn't set quite right um, because we team teach in this course. I hadn't delivered the content that was associated, the lecture content that was associated with the, the second escape room, um, which meant we didn't quite get it right. Um, so it was a little bit harder for them, which meant that 
kind of lost engagement a little bit. Uh, so that that was uh, interesting and, and we'll certainly uh, make changes um, for next time. OK, um, finally, so I plan to run the escape rooms again in the next academic year. They were really a, a huge success overall. Um, so I'm definitely planning to, to run them again. I will make some minor redesigns that the, the first escape room will barely needs any changes, but we'll do some more significant changes to the second escape room. Um, we'll stick with the same timings. Uh, the main thing I want to do next academic year is do more of a formal evaluation. This academic year, um, I did, it was more of an informal, uh, an informal evaluation, my own observations, tutor and student sort of informal feedback. So uh, next year I plan to use a mixed methods approach and capture both student and tutor feedback for the tutors will do some semi-structured interviews for students um, it will involve a couple of steps it will um we'll start by doing um a survey um immediately after the escape room so have a debriefing and then um a survey to capture the immediate responses of students uh, to the escape room and then we'll also do a survey at the end of the um semester which will um, give students time to reflect on the escape rooms that they've taken part in um, and to capture any sort of uh, any potential behavioural changes um, uh, that students might have uh, observed. Uh, we will also then do some student interviews to dig a bit deeper um, and to get some suggestions for improvement. OK, uh, that's me. Thank you very much for listening. So thank you for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be able to share my um, uh, experience with the um, escape room. My name, as Susan, uh, sorry, um, Rosemary said, is Isabel Murillo, and I am a senior lecturer in microbiology at the University of Bristol. And here you can see the name of the students that uh, helped me. They co-created these uh, escape rooms, Lydia, Emma and Laura. So, uh, so um, as we have heard during the day, uh, the benefits of the pedagogical um, effectiveness of games, the positivity of the resource, and we all know that in primary and secondary education, uh, games are used constantly, but it's getting lost in the higher education. So it's very, I'm very happy to see that there are so many people interested in playful learning in higher education. So my field is microbiology and as many other disciplines, there are many concepts that are challenging and um, it's, they are difficult to remember. So using uh, playful learning helps with the, uh, with the learning. Uh, so and the concept that I explore is revising units uh, contents while we are playing. And I have used this concept before in other games that I have developed in my teaching. So these um, games as a revise, revising tool is perfect uh, to use before the unit exams and we use in microbiology and what better way of using uh, doing a revision that um, having a journey to find a medical treatment for a microbiolo microbiological threat. That is what this is about. So why we created uh, the microscape room? Uh, so in the first year of the at the university, there, there, there is a very uh, challenging times for the students and they actually need opportunity for socializing in on, on campus. They benefit from relaxed environments uh, to, to enjoy learning. And then they like to collaborate with other students, but they also have this stimuli, the, a little bit of competition um, with, the, with, with the collaborations. So games can provide all these things together to the, to the students. And microbiology is also a topic that is ideal to use in games. So, the experience that I have by creating other games um, helped me to uh, develop in th this one, this uh, escape room as well. The only thing is that obviously I needed funding to buy things, to pay students, and I need some help. So 
the best help that I could have for this kind of game was to have students on board with me, and that was really fun. So, um, the students as co-creators, uh, it's a concept that we are embracing now at many levels, but definitely was one of the goals that I have with this um, uh, project. So I applied for funding to the innovation and education um, scheme that is running my faculty, and I had enough money to pay three students, three first um, year students. And together uh, we developed this game that we call the micro escape room. The aims of the game, it, they were very clear from the beginning. We wanted to have playful learning in our in my teaching in the classroom. We wanted I wanted to use this game to revise the unit that I was um, uh, directing, leading, and I wanted to have give a challenge to the students to to be able to work in groups to to develop that skill as well so um at the same time the engage with the microbiology is improved they build a cohort community very important when uh, they start at the beginning of the first year especially because my unit is the first teaching block so it's the first thing that they are starting learning and obviously having fun when with playful learning. And if you add on top of that, that they can save the world because they can find a solution to our original problem even better. So uh, how we created this game? So I did all the reading. I did all the pedagogical research, bought games, books, all the material that we needed to make the games. And then I provided a series of criteria to the students, the co-creators. So there was based on one unit content. Uh, we established the duration of the playtime, and I wanted to have some elements of the microbiological lab in the game. So we came together in the summer after the final exams. So these three um, first year students, they had already taken the, the unit, so they have very fresh um, uh, knowledge of the unit and they could pitch the right uh, level of the difficulty. Bear in mind that uh, sometimes the students are actually much more um, challenging that they, they put questions that are more challenging than the one that we put as an academics. But they also know what is interesting for the students, which is um, something that I really wanted to incorporate in the game. So we were all of us in a room and we spent two days and a, and a half trying to design all the um, the steps of the game and the final product. So Lydia, Emma and Laura talked, discussed, laughed and created everything from scratch. And voila, we had finally the micro um, escape room. So here you have you can see the um, the three students. Uh, with everything on the tables, trying to design the, the game. And after those two days and a half, we have the first set that looks like this. So three boxes, a letter and a series of um, elements. Uh, so, but I needed 15 sets because I have a cohort of about 100. So didn't have any more fun to pay the students, so no funding. So I have to do it myself. So I had all the material, all the material. I put everything in my house. I asked my family to help me cutting, pasting, gluing things. And finally, I got the 15 sets that we needed. So how we play it. So it's, a, as I say, it's a classroom, this kind of classroom. It's a perfect. I show you some pictures later. Perfect for this kind of interactive activity. And they play in the small groups of around six students. Um, I give them an introductory explanation and then they have on the tables, they have a bag, which is a fabric bag. Like you can see on the right hand side. Um, it's like fabric. Uh, they, this one it was decorated my, by my daughter. She helped me with that. And then inside they have all the pieces. So they start all together at the same time and they have the informative letter from the 
hypothetical public health England. They have a news article that in this case is Bristol Post because we want to emphasize that we live in Bristol, in the city of Bristol. They have so many intricate puzzle, uh, word, uh, sorry, word search, code breaking activities. And then they have the opportunity to go step by step all the concepts that are in the units. And they need to collaborate with the other students. If they don't remember what is the solution to that, they need to add a talk to the other students. And at the end, the game was evaluated with a questionnaire in the same session. So this is how it looks. Uh, so we have these three boxes and a letter and a cryptic. So the, everything starts with the envelope. The, then they, they have the clues to open this cryptic, which has a key that opens the first uh, box. And from the first box, they get the clues to open the second. And from the second box, they have the clues to open the third. But I must emphasize that in each of these boxes, I'll show you later, there are different uh, activities. All of them are equally important because even at the end of the game, they have pieces they haven't used, but they needed to answer the question in the third box. So this is how it looks inside. So box one, it has this the cipher. Uh, they have um, um, this and they need to as encrypted message. And then in the box two, they have a Petri dish uh, and other pieces. And in box three, they have this uh, tube and envelope with something else that in this case is a syringe that has the solution. And you can see here also that I have inside of the boxes, there is a, a piece of paper that is to indicate what it should be inside of each box. And then each pieces, they have the number of uh, where it should go. So for example, this paper goes in box three. That is actually important because I have to refill everything if it has been used. And at the end of the session, the students have to put back things inside of each box. So that actually helps to organize the boxes very nicely. The gloves, is the, they are inside of the envelope at the beginning. So this is uh, uh, illustrate. These photos are from my students. You can see that there's a big room. Uh, this is a big room with many, many uh, 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 tables, each attached to a screen. And here you can see these three students very engaged with the activity they are doing. And these ones that were posing for me to take a picture. So it was really, uh, I have done this two consecutive years and it's actually quite enjoyable. So why are we playing it again? So second year was this uh, academic year and uh, it's because the evaluation of the activity, the feedback um, uh, has been very positive. Uh, also the oral feedback from the students where they finish their games. They, environment in the in the classroom is uh, very playful, very cheerful. They see that they are making connections. The students are making connections with other students. It's a lot of fun and, and laughter as well. So I don't have the graphs to show you, but also I don't have the time either. Um, so can it be played inclusively? There is something that we talk about. It was talked this morning in, in the keynote uh, speaker session. Uh, um, we are trying, we are trying to include, uh, to be very inclusive. So first of all, we start with the pace. The pace is, um, it's uh, an hour and a half uh, session. So they have, you know, they, they, although they all start at the same time, they can finish at different times. So that the game is designed to be done in about 45 minutes, but not all the students uh, go to uh, on the same uh, pace, sorry. So we designed the rules that are very flexible, so they are versatile, so they are they can accommodate the needs of different students. Um, so we have we have a huge cohort, it's a hundred or more students, but because we work in a small groups within big groups, it's kind of more cosier. Um, uh, we try to minimize the amount of uh, reading and writing that they have to do. So that is to, to be more inclusive um, with dyslexic students. 
Um, they are, the, the games have different parts, so it can be played as a whole group of six, or it can be um, make it a little bit smaller. And if there are students that don't want to play in collaboration with other ones, they can do it themselves. But still, the solution to what they are doing will be very important because all the pieces are important to the final uh, solution of the game. Uh, we also give hints after a certain amount of time. So we want the students to progress. We want the students to participate and continue engaging. We don't want them to feel frustrated. We want to celebrate participation, not just the winning um, team. Um, so I can, I'm not going to show you the, the game, but I have the pieces around me. Um, and then just to say that, um, we are very happy with this and we are going to continue using and if you have any questions um, here. Thank you for listening. So hello everyone. It's really nice to be here today with you and I'm Pia Sitoren. I'm a university lecturer from uh, University of Eastern Finland and I'm teaching uh, pharmacotherapy and patient counseling in pharmacy. And now I'm going to uh, talk to you about our pharmaceutical escape room. And it's not changing the slide now, it's changing. <laughs> uh, it's medicine dispensing and patient counseling. And no, I'm sorry, it is, is something going on here. Okay, <laughs> now I'm at the right slide. Okay, our pharmaceutical escape room. Uh, in Finnish, it's called pakoteki, and it's a nice word play, but it doesn't sound that uh, nice in English, but we use that uh, in, in Finnish. But the first uh, few words about our degrees. Uh, we have a bachelor and master degree programs in pharmacy, and bachelor of pharmacy is a three-year undergraduate degree. And every year we take in about uh, 200 students. And this uh, program includes in year two and three uh, internship, uh, uh, meaning practicing in pharmacy, in community pharmacy. And this, uh, our game is voluntary for the students. They can play the escape game after the second year, just before the practical training. So it's a game they can practice the skills they are going to need uh, when going, when doing the internship, what the skills they are going to need in a community pharmacy. So our aim is to give our students a sense of empowerment so that uh, so they are confident that yes, we can manage uh, in the pharmacy. That's that's our main goal. And we made this uh, escape game with our master students. And every year uh, the master program includes a project work course in which we give students one subject to work on. Uh, and this project started in autumn 21 and we had several workshops and brainstorming sessions with our master students uh, where we planned the game team storyline, game flow and puzzles together. And finally, after many uh, twists and turns, we piloted the game in spring in spring 22 with our bachelor students. And by this spring, about uh, 24, about 200 bachelor students have played this game already. And here you can see uh, our learning outcomes. Uh, the players have to know how to use appropriate tools for search information about medicines and to give patient counseling. And they have to also apply legislation and regulatory guidelines on prescribing and dispensing medicines and health insurance issues. And they have to also apply care guidelines in self-care and self-medications. And finally, they have to identify and solve problems in medication. And this game is played uh, in team size of four, a maximum five students. 
And well, let's the game begin. Uh, it's a thunderstorm and there's no electricity in the pharmacy. Uh, computers and databases are operating normally, but the prescription processing system is not in use. Uh, a customer comes to the pharmacy and she has many issues to, en to attend to. Uh, the player's final task is to find out how much the customer's medicines cost in total, and they have one hour to go, which our reserve generator runs for on one hour. And here you can see our physical game room. Uh, normally this room is our teaching pharmacy, where we dispense and counseling but we can convert this room into an escape room when needed. And these exclamation marks you see shows the spots of puzzles. In total, we have 10 different puzzles in the game. Uh, in the room, we have also a big screen through which we can give tips to the players if needed, and where the players can see this ticking clock. And here you can see the different locks we are using in the game. Uh, we have these uh, traditional number locks, uh, direction lock, uh, key locker, phone, and electronic cashier where the players enter the total sum as the final puzzle. And as catches, we are using uh, UV lamp and code disk and cryptic tables. And here you can see our monitoring room, which is next uh, room to the uh, gaming room. And we have a Zoom connection to the game room, so we see and hear everything what is going on there. And we have uh, here you can see we have a special escape room program through which uh, we control the clock and we can give the tips to the players. And here you can see the Zoom connection. And after every uh, play game, we uh, are doing this step briefing session and we ask our students ideas. Uh, and here you can see what our students who have played the game have said about this game. Uh, uh, here you can see the results that the majority strongly agree that learning it was enjoyable and escape games should be used more in pharmacy studies and an escape game makes you more involved in working together and this escape room was well constructed and motivated to play. And in addition we asked the students how the escape room promoted soft skills and the majority strongly agreed that the game promoted logical reasoning problem solving skills, ability to listen to group members and active participating. And for now, we are uh, doing our virtual reality version of this game. Uh, we re uh, re received a nice amount of money funding for development from our university. So this is our next journey. <laughs> Thank you for listening.